Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. Today's webinar is about advanced inking techniques in clips to the paint presented by Jeremy C. Joseph, also known as Ink Shift. Before we begin the webinar, there are some housekeeping items that we'd like to go through. The webinar will be approximately one hour long. All attendees will be muted. Question and answer session will be during the last 15 minutes of the webinar. Attendees can ask questions in the GoToWebinar question box right away. Due to time constraints, not all questions will be answered. The webinar will be recorded. The recording will be shared on social media and will be sent via email to all registrants and attendees. The panelists for this webinar are Fahim Nias, Joanna Brower, Mario Quinones, myself, and Jeremy C. Joseph. For those of you who are joining us for the very first time and have never heard about Cliff Studio Paint, Cliff Studio Paint is your all-in-one solution for stunning, ready-to-publish illustrations, comics, manga, and animations. Learn more at cliffstudio.net forward slash n and graphicsly.com. And with that, we'd like to pass the reins of the webinar to Jeremy and his presentation, Advanced Inking Techniques in Clip Studio Paint. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mario. Hello, everybody. My name is Jeremy. Uh, I am um, I am um, yeah, you may know me better as Inkshift. I'm a former animator here in Portland, Oregon, and uh, for um, for the last 15 years, I've worked for companies like Disney, Cartoon Network, ESPN, Stanford, you know, uh, you name it, all kinds of companies. I always worked digitally, uh, first in Flash, then in Harmony. Uh, so after about 15 years of that, I got tired of working on other people's stuff. So, uh, I, you know, I wanted to, wanted to go back to drawing and I really missed it. So I started slowly drawing and I was, uh, started posting. And I was immediately drawn to ink, uh, no pun intended. Uh, I just joined Instagram and I heard about this thing called Inktober. So I started drawing a posting. And, uh, and in mid-2018, I retired from animation. Um, I'd made the shift from digital uh, all the way to uh, traditional. And I shifted a lot of ink across paper. I shifted from the shadows into the limelight. Uh, so ink shift was born. So you know, uh, I, I love drawing, uh, and I love drawing super detailed mechanical uh, designs, as you can see, busy scenes peppered with funny Easter eggs. Uh, I have a really hard time drawing uh, things simply, as you know, uh, as you can see. Um, so rather than try and overcome this perceived inability, I decided to just double down on my strength and do do what I love and what I enjoy the most. Um, so yeah, now my focus is uh, is inking uh, biomechanical designs uh, featuring gorgeous, strong women, cats mostly. Uh, I'm always interested in drawing uh, hair and texture and whatever ins whatever else uh, inspires me. Uh, I also happen to be married to the smartest, sweetest, and most beautiful woman in the world. So many of my pieces are all homages to her in uh, in one way or another. Uh, so I, I discovered Clip Studio Paint about three years ago because I just didn't care for uh, for drawing in other programs, even though I'd been working digitally since about 2000. Um, I just always thought that I didn't like drawing digitally, uh, but Clip Studio proved me wrong. And then some, in my uh, humble personal opinion, uh, it is better than any uh, any program ever tried. And I've tried so many. The uh, the brush engine is first in class, smooth and effortless. It opens and writes uh, Photoshop files, PSDs, has its own built-in perspective tool. Uh, everything is customizable, and that's a huge thing. And I'll get into that later. But everything is customizable to how you like it. Uh, and you can't uh, you can't beat the price of the program with uh, eternal free updates. So. Yeah, for those reasons and many more, I am uh, I am beyond honored to speak today on their behalf. Uh, thank you all for joining. It is a true honor. Um, Graphicsly, Celsius, Wacom, uh, thank you all for giving me the time to speak. So 
let me get out of this uh, this here and uh, talk about what we are here today for. We are talking. Uh, we're talking about ink. So why ink? Uh, I love ink because it's bold and it's versatile. It's unforgiving, but it's also such a rewarding skill to master. The principles I will talk about today here uh, will work digitally as well as traditionally. Uh, as in many trades, it's it's less about the tool and it's more about the process. And my thoughts in here are also far from exhaustive. Um, these are not the rules. These are not the rules. Uh, there's so much more to learn and realize about yourself and what works for you and what you what you like and what you don't like. And so what works for me may uh, may very well not like work for you. So uh, so go you know go play go find out. That's uh, those are the rules. So uh, but first let's let's go over some uh, some uh, inking classics. Um, there are four components as you can see here. Um, so while I talk about these. I will uh, start, and uh, I'll start inking over this uh, this piece that I'll be working on. Uh, this is one of my characters, uh, Bacon, Battle Bacon after my own cat, uh, Bacon, who is a uh, it's a uh, she's, she's quite the storied character. There's a I have a lot of uh, pieces about her, but yeah. So let's uh, let's start inking. So the first one is line control. Um, line control means that you control uh, where the where the line goes, uh, rather than than you uh, rather than letting the pen decide. And that's that's the first step to control. And the second step is to letting the pen go where it goes. Um, without getting in the way with pesky uh, judgments and evaluations, but I'll, I'll, I'll touch on that more later. Um, in fact, Bacon is trying to get into the room right now. Um, some people rotate their pages to get the best line quality, to get the best uh, consistent line quality in your uh, in your work. But I am uh, I'm not like that. It's uh, it's something that you might want to try out for yourself and see if it works for you. Um, and if it doesn't, you know, then uh, then don't do that. Uh, it does lead me to a very inking, very important uh, inking part, which is ergonomics. Um, and it's uh, it's it's so important to take care of the uh, the beautiful tools that we have out here, either either uh, software or just our arms and our brains, which are our most important tools. Uh, we have to take good care of them, or we're gonna have a bad time. So uh, I will interrupt this uh, this inking briefly, and I'll uh, go over here for um, this guy. Um, let's see. So there are three parts of our arm that are that are super important to. Uh, Let's see, uh, that are super important to keep an eye on. And it's gonna affect the, the consistency of our line. So here we got three parts. We got the wrist, we got the elbow, and we got the shoulder. So for the wide, for the widest arcs and for the, the most fluent and the largest lines, you're gonna be drawing uh, from the wrist. This will give you the most uh most bang for your buck and then you're going to go down to the wrist i mean to the to the elbow for uh for the for um uh smaller lines and then for the the smallest of lines you're gonna want to go down to purely your uh from your from your wrist down to your fingers. So let's see if that makes sense. So this is gonna be the widest from the elbow, uh, from the shoulder, and then uh, the uh, the elbow. And you wanna make sure that you keep, if you're drawing from the elbow, you wanna keep make sure that you keep your elbow locked or your wrist locked 
both of these are all going to uh, affect the, the radius of your inking. So yeah, so next up is uh, line weight. That is a huge one. Um, a line weight means a variation of the pressure that you put onto whatever tool that you're using. I'm going to go over here. Um, so, and it's and this is digitally or traditionally. So when you press harder, you're going to get a thicker line. And when you press uh, softer, you're going to get a thinner line. So that's, that's a very basic thing to keep in mind. Let's see here. Um, and your light source is going to determine the uh, is going to determine the uh, the line weight, which I usually put on the opposite opposite side of the light source. So, say for example, if the light source is coming from here, uh, the the thickness is going to be on this side, and uh, vice versa. So, for this piece, let's just assume that this here. It's going to be the light source. So it's going to get rid of this messiness. It's always going to go over here. So um, the, uh, the light source will affect your line uh, weight, but it's also going to be the actual physical weight of things. So I usually put them at the bottom of things. Like say, for example, something has a heavy nose or uh, like this is a, a heavy uh, robot shoe. You can see like here, I'll put the, I put the thickest lines at the bottom and I'll continue upwards. Um, so the line will start out thin and then it goes down or it goes up, you know, whichever, whichever way works best for you. Let's see. Um, so on the heavier lines around your design, so for example, just basically around, say this is a coffee cup, those lines uh, that define the shape are going to be called the, the contour lines. They bring things to the foreground, uh, suggesting weight while heavier lines on the inside, uh, while lighter lines on the inside can uh, push it to the back uh, and add depth of volume and texture. So here, there's a lot of ways to apply texture. Um, and right here, I'm doing some, uh, some, some hatching. So let's get rid of this. Uh, the big difference between digital and traditional is that there's only so much pressure you can put onto a physical pen. Um, without mashing it into the paper. Um, and the beauty about digital is you can uh, make your brush as big as you want and you can still have uh, a really nice uh, taper in all your work. And that it's really gonna, it's really nice because you can, um, you can get, a nice thickness with minimal pressure. So I like to keep it a little smaller, mostly because I work so uh, so detailed. Yeah, so the, the big difference between digital and traditional um, is that uh, you've got shortcut keys. And uh, the one thing that I absolutely adore besides the brush engine in Clip Studio Paint is the fact that you can set all your shortcuts. Um, and you're not tied by some arbitrary rigid control scheme. Uh, you can set uh, you can set anything to anything uh, and it doesn't really matter what key it is. And this is especially uh, nice for, uh, for us lefties. Um, so let's see, a little a little lettering here. Okay, so um, for line weight consistency, I'm going to recommend that you don't zoom all the way in. 
uh, it's going to do uh, it's going to do two bad things for you. It is going to um, uh, it's going to slow me down personally because if I'm working like this, it's great. I can get as many details as I want. I get all the little cables, all the little wires, all the you know all the uh, all the little doodads that I want. Um, but when I zoom out, I'm going to notice that this line is way thicker than anything else that I've drawn. So I'm going to have to go back in and clean that up. So it's good to keep, keep a basic, uh, to keep a basic distance from your work. And if you're streaming, for example, uh, it'll be easier to see what you're doing. Or if you make a time lapse out of what you're doing, uh, that's also just going to be uh easier to follow so let's see so it's a it's a bad habit <clears throat> that i picked up early and i'm still uh, trying to unlearn this excuse me so um and the next part of our uh of our four part series is contrast inking is all about contrast it is all about thicks and thins and lights and darks so for the purposes of the conversation, a contrast refers to the uh, arrangement of values um, in your piece. So drawing and inking is basically um, arranging lines at different distances from another. And so how you use these values um, will either make, or pe make your piece read clearly or people are just going to be lost in a mess of... Uh, of things that all look the same thing and no one's gonna have an idea what's going on. So um, that's something to be aware of. Um, and so another thing that is very crucial is uh, to make sure that your your uh, your black areas are just as vital as your line weight. So um, black areas add balance and contrast and harmony and uh, and pop to a piece so for example uh, I'll, I'll make a little make a little side part here so uh let's say i have an uh this is a panel in a comic right and it's a black panel i'm gonna go over here and say uh oops over here all right, I'm gonna have a, have a black doorway. So the way to get that contrast is to either have the character be in white or to um, have the frame, have the door frame be in black or uh, another fantastic way is to make sure that uh, if you want to have something really pop out, you can uh, you can have them straight in black, and you can have parts in white for for dramatic effect. So yeah, yeah, you can have uh, yeah. It's it's all about how you use your values. Now, in this particular piece, um, I can use it to uh, highlight the distance between things. So for example, here, her hair is in the back. I will use it to, uh, to focus areas. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, and it, it generally just creates, uh, it, it can set the mood in the piece and it can really just kind of add to whatever sort of, uh, sort of lighting scheme that you got here. You can add it, you can use it for texture and, uh, and any, any number of things. So, um, it can also be a very subtle or not so subtle way uh, to direct the viewer's eyes. 
draw attention to, to her lovely mask. Um, or uh, just make things stand out in an otherwise crowded area. Let's see, uh, perhaps I can use some examples here. Here, for example, uh, the, the focus is on the character and there's a whole lot of detail, but the black focuses and centers the eye. Let's see, I use this black background to uh, kind of pop out the background and to, to make it really uh, a cohesive here. Here I use the framing of the trees uh, to make to make a distinguishing feature between the, the foreground and the background. And I leave a, a center here. Let's see. Yeah. So let's see. Um, and one of the ways, one of the another way that really drew me to uh, Clip Studio was the way that it fills in blacks. It's amazing uh, in its abilities to, um, to cleanly fill, and that's and that's something that I've really missed in other programs. Um, it's it's just got a it's got a flawless uh, bucket fill tool. So here I'm just gonna over, go over here. I'm gonna here be here in my sub tool fill and uh so say for example i have this area it fills it in flawlessly there's no there's no pixel edges there's never any nasty overlap it was in fact a uh, raul trevino on instagram who pointed me to uh clip studio paint because he was drawing his comic uh, live forever and uh i was always watching him draw these incredible effortless blacks so it's amazing um uh, it is also infinitely customizable there's a whole bunch of settings that you can adjust here the color margin uh, the area scaling how far to how far it goes in filling gaps so say for example this is a uh, not a filled gap so it's going to fill the gap all the way up there, I can turn it down and then it's just gonna fill the whole screen. Another beautiful thing, when it does start to do that, I can interrupt it before it even gets that far. So that's, uh, that's something great to know about Clip Studio. Uh, let's see, texture is another, uh, is another uh, big thing that is really important in inking. Uh, I use a lot of it, it uh, adds volume and uh, visual interest and uh, you guess it more detail so for example here i'm drawing these little pouches so i can add little uh, little indentations in the leather maybe it's not leather you know uh who knows um but it, it just lives in texture library everything up it brings volume to a flat object in conceptual space uh which is exactly what it does um, and more importantly it can show you the age of a well-loved uh, denim jacket like over here you can have some nice uh, fluff or you can have some nice uh, this is like a zipper it's showing its age you can zoom in all the way um, but Here's the beauty of the uh, of the of the Clip Studio engine. You can just go as as wide and as deep as you want, and then you can go here and just instead of erasing it, you can just go over it and add more textures. You can add some nice it's a nice sheen. So let's go over here. Uh, texture is all about uh, the life of an object. So right now I'm going up here and I'm just flicking up with my brush. I mean, in, in more traditional settings, you have a push and pull of a brush. 
because it, it's physically limited by uh, which way it can go. But uh, in digital inking, it, it doesn't really matter. So I, I'm picking up, I'm going down, and it looks the same. So uh, use that to your advantage. Um, so yeah, contrast also uh, informs, oops, informs uh, how you space your shapes and your empty areas, especially for uh, for someone as who works as uh, detailed as I do. So let's see. Um, here's a here's a good example. Um, I leave a lot of empty areas to balance out the the in, insane detail. Um, it's uh, it's it's something. It's reminiscent of me as a child, where I would just fill a whole page with with marks, and it and the question would be what I drew, and I drew a swimming pool, and why isn't it obvious? It's just you know the the viewer's eye needs to rest. Um, uh, and while this isn't necessarily related to the practice of inking. Uh, it is to growing as an artist and to making uh, making the things that you love and to uh, also creating things that people want to look at. You know, um, making sure to arrange a piece so that the viewer's eyes have a place to rest. Um, and uh, it's it's all about keeping compositions clean. And uh, let's see, where is another one? Hat on, I can't. Uh, I can't see it right now. But that's uh, that's kind of it. Okay, so uh, practice. And last but not least, of the basics, um, practice is uh, practice is is hugely important. It is not something that uh, that beginners like to hear when. When you talk about uh, like how do you get better at inking, I was like, well, there's there's I would there's many ways that I can uh, I could talk about doing. You know, like we talked about the basics here now. Um, but you know, uh, if you're here, I'm I'm assuming that you love drawing and you love what you do and you want to grow that craft. So you're already you're already ahead of already ahead of uh, of the world that. Uh, that you know, by having something that you love and knowing, love knowing that you love something is gonna make you uh, want to draw uh, more and learn quickly and learn more about it and watch more webinars exactly like this. Um, yeah. So um, and do warm ups. Uh, oftentimes, uh, I used to do many exercises. To just get get into the get into the feel of my hand, um, so I would do things like like entire pages of this, entire pages of drawing circles and trying to make them complete, um, or uh, waves like this, like start thin, go thick. Starts in, go thick, over and over and over. It's gonna be. It's it's a real. Uh, uh, it's it's a tedious undertaking, but it does. It really improves your hand-eye coordination and it helps you understand your own hand, and your tool, whatever it is that you're using. Um, I used to have a very heavy hand, so uh, and I was very heavy, very hard on pens. And uh, I had to really learn how to relax my hand. So you can see here, I'm still maintaining all the brush pressure. I call the the, the the light source is still coming from there. I'm go thicker at the end. I can have a nice separation here. I can just go like this. Make, you know, kind of make sure that the lines are touching. And then go over here and I just fill it in. It saves me a lot of inking. 
Um, and once you get past the beginner stages, you get tired of these exercises really quickly. Um, but when you're starting out, I, I highly recommend that you uh, that you at least uh, try a couple of weeks of this. Just try a whole bunch of um, of exercises. Just go like this, like circles, and make you know. Try and get a feel for your hand. Like at first, it'll be hard just to draw a straight line. I mean, straight lines are overrated, honestly. But uh, it it's uh, it's really a matter of learning your own hand and finding the basis of your tools. So I'll go here. I've just made my brush huge. Um, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna really uh, help you fine tune that masterpiece of uh, of a hand that you already have, and uh, it's up to you to to really you know step into step into the inking power. So I'll, I will generally start walking warming up uh, by starting on areas that aren't critical. Um, like maybe a whole bunch of mechanical uh, details, uh, maybe some wires, and maybe she's got a little power supply down here. You'll notice that I, I I haven't laid my piece out very detailed because uh, you know that's that's not really how I draw. Uh, let's see. Um, but yeah, and I'll I'll just won't I won't touch critical areas like faces or um, uh, or things like that until I feel my brain kicking. And it's a huge thing. I mean, once you stop drawing for a while, uh, you won't lose the ability to draw, but you will get rusty. And uh, the more you draw. Uh, the more that the less that uh, that that recovery period will take, but it's it's always going to be there. So it's 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 you know for the serious uh, serious pros like serious comics artists, uh, they'll just sight in with a with half a panel and be uh, and be good with that. Let's see. So we got done. To the hue. So you see how I'm just, I'm not paying a whole lot of attention to, uh, much construction. Let's see. All right. Um, let's move on here. So, um, for, for, you know, when, when you're just starting out warmups, um and and you're tired of these uh, these exercises that I talk about uh, you can just you know and you don't have any ideas there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of prompt lists out there that's only that's honestly how I started getting back into drawing is uh, inktober and before that it was just uh, you know whatever my my friends on Facebook or Instagram or whatever uh, would recommend um, so let's see, yeah, um, it's it, it, it's all about um, letting you know, learning to trust your hand. Um, and it's all about uh, um, yeah, let's uh, let's move on from there. I forgot what I was talking about. Um, I rarely ever ink other people's uh, work, but if I did, my approach would be the same. I would just interpret the pencil lines like I'm doing here, uh, rather than uh, straight up tracing, mostly because I want to keep the uh, the intensity or the energy of the piece alive. And uh, personally, that's just you know that's just that's just how I uh, how I work. Here's a nice. Thicks and thins for you, um, and so the question that comes up all the time when I draw is, "What brush is that?" So let's talk brushes. Um, 
Clip Studio Paint comes with a with a, a set of stock brushes. Uh, the real, the ones that I generally use are the stock G Pen, which is very much uh, it's a nice clean fluid brush. There's no uh, it's there. There's no um, edge to it. I like the more tapered brush that I've been using for this piece. It adds. Uh, it's it has a nice in and out point. You can see it's just even when I start super thin, it has a nice uh, has a nice taper. Uh, you can also. Um, you know, even though I only uh, use the stock brushes, there's a ton of brush packs available by other people. Um, you can either you can either buy it from them directly, or you can go through the uh, Clip Studio Asset Marketplace, uh, which you can uh, which you can either go through the Studio Setup or uh, or the website. So, and if you're looking for a more traditional look, like I like I do. Like I like uh, Robert Marzullo is a comics artist that uh, that ma that makes really nice brushes that are tailored to uh, comics artists. You get a lot of textures. Uh, I personally have uh, his uh, his G pen here. It's a nice uh, it's a nice clean one, but it 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 tapers and. Uh, Tapers a little bit nicer than the the regular ones. And if you if you say for example you have another pen or another brush that you want to play with, you can go here um, and taper and tamper with all the particular. You got spraying effects. You got stroke. You can play with uh, with all the all the specifics of it. Uh, in fact, there was a it was a webinar not too long ago. Uh, biographically that uh, that focuses on purely that so that's something to look at um, so yeah I, I prefer uh, Clip Studio over any other program to Inkin because of its superior uh, stability and trueness to your lines uh, I worked in vector for a good 10-15 uh, years and I hated what it did with my lines uh, it takes a line and it translates it into something that I don't recognize and uh, it took me uh, it took me a while to get my own line back. Um, and so uh, this this smoothness is going to be uh, available to you right out of the box. Uh, you can you can tweak all the settings uh, in the settings. Uh, you can you can get there everything in this program is customizable and manageable and uh, you can change it or layouts you can have quick panels that uh so you don't you you know and this is specifically good for mobile users um where you can just uh have all of your tools available and you don't have to have, uh, have many panels open like I, I only have a limited amount of panels open here um i am faster at traditional than inking because because of the eternal undoes let's see where we are because of the uh, eternal undoes uh, that uh, clip studio offers you so right now i can just drop the uh i can drop the background layer i just go over here and play with these things um and while uh Let's see. Yeah. Um, one thing that you can do to, to kind of kickstart your uh, your understanding of ink is to go straight to ink, even digitally. Um, it's I generally only do this on paper, but this, this works here as well. So, for example, one exercise you can do. Uh, I forgot her arm. Is um, Oops, is to do an entire drawing and go straight to ink. And don't uh, you can you can have an underlayer if you want to guide you a little, but the 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 process is to just dump to jump in the in the deep end. Um, 
and to uh, to kind of fix any mistakes that you make, either by creatively uh, playing with them. Like say, for example, I didn't want this line to be there. So one thing I can do is I can either <laughs> draw over it and cheat that way. Uh, you're still inking. Uh, or you can kind of uh, build it into something that is uh, that you hadn't planned on yet. That can be like a happy accident of things. So let's see. Um, let's see, let's see. I'm not, uh, uh, move along here. Um, so that said, it's, it's totally okay to undo a line as many times as you want. Uh, you want to make sure that you you start to feel comfortable uh, in your drawings and that you can feel like you have control uh, and that you're not just beholden to uh, to a tool. Um, and it's it's important to just not agonize over every line. And as you as your inking confidence grows through just doing it, um, you will uh, you will um, focus on rather than, than focus on what you have rather than what you're lacking. Um, a lot of artists I I know uh, get really um, they get really focused on. Uh, they get really focused on uh, having the perfect piece, and uh, it's it's. This is one of the reasons why I start out of nowhere the way that I do, uh, like this. I hadn't planned to to do this, but it but it's fun. So let's uh, let's let's keep doing that. Um, I just it, it just get in the way with my own judgment and my own comparison and my own uh, my own worries about whether a piece will match up and which which brings me to something which is hugely important uh, for for artists oh, thank you uh, which is mindset mindset is huge mindset is is almost uh, everything a lot of artists that I know will will downright downplay uh what their uh what their how how beautiful a piece is and say they made a mistake or they didn't do something right or when in reality the piece is amazing uh i call that thing called uh oh i should finish i i call that thing um invisible mistakes and that is uh it's it's a piece that you did it's a mistake that you made and didn't come out quite how you envisioned it. And you think everyone else can see it. Uh, when the truth is that the only person that sees what is, you know, uh, what you think is lacking. Um, oops. Is, uh, is you. So you're the only person that sees that. Um, people worry all the time about how their work is looking or how they're doing as an artist. And I want you to think about what you were like uh, as a little kid when you're drawing. You know, you'd scribble in crayon on the wall, or you'd mash a, a blunt pencil into a piece of paper, and you'd move on. You know, you didn't worry if people didn't like it. You didn't worry how many likes or followers it would get, or if someone wanted to pay you money for it. Um, none of those things mattered to you at that time. You were just interested in. Uh, making a mark and uh, you created out of a sheer need and uh, it was pure joy, pure joy that was guiding you. Um, you know, you, uh, that the mark you put down was perfect and holy and it brought you closer to making the next mark, which was going to be better than the last one you did by the sheer... Uh, by the sheer act of putting that line down. That line you put down is, neck, is, is better than the next one. 
and you just leveled up as an artist and you didn't even know it. And as you get older um, and you gain, uh, you gain exposure to the demands of society and what the expectations of society, so you didn't like that. Um, and uh, it's, it, it starts to stop you from, from expressing yourself quite as freely because, uh, you know, for, for whatever reasons. And it's, uh, and it's a shame, you know, um, those that, and those that really fully do uh, exercise their freedom to express themselves, they're judged by many, uh, and we stop, and we stop doing it. So, it, but it's, you know, the thing to think about and the thing to remember that Oftentimes, there is more. Uh, there's more going on behind of our actions because it's our brain's job. It's a normal function of brains to just keep us safe from screwing up, and uh, our brain's job is to keep us safe. And our brain doesn't know the difference between um, like a bad inking line uh, or other perceived danger. So yeah. So I think uh, we're about ready to, to start wrapping this up. Um, and so I'll leave you with uh, with my closing thoughts as I draw this uh, this hand. Um, do you want me? Do you, do you want me? Do you want to say something first, and then we go into questions, or? Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I've I've my I've my my closing thoughts that I kind of want to talk about. And then, okay. uh, then we can then we can absolutely move into Q and A. All right. Okay. Then let's do it. <laughs> Thank you, Joanna. Um, so we we live in a world uh, filled with judgment, and uh, some some of it is from the outside uh, reasons we can't control, but uh, in especially from an artist perspective, it is going to be. Uh, it's going to be it's going to be coming from between our ears. Uh, we are often our worst enemies, and we tie our personal worth to our work. Um, and we think other work, other people's work, is better than ours. And sometimes it is, you know, and that's and that's totally okay. Um, uh, we are salty sometimes that others have more followers than we do, um, but uh, but more, you know, more likes of followers. And we wonder why we didn't get called back for that job. Uh, but I want you to, to remember that none of it matters. The only thing that matters is that you love what you do, that you don't forget to have fun with it. And uh, you put your head down, you do the work, and uh, the rest will come to so, you. Yeah. That's uh, that's that's uh, that's kind of all I have to say about that. So uh, thank you for listening so far, and uh, I'm uh, I'm ready to to move into Q and A if you're ready, Jonah. Okay, very good. Um, we'll start with a with the basics. Can you describe your setup? Sure. I am working on a 22 inch Cintiq. Uh, I have a 27 one in 27 inch one at my office. Um, but uh, I like the 22 because it's it has a nice compact uh, footprint, and uh, I am uh, using uh, the latest version of Clip Studio. I think is uh, 1.97. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, do you have any see. specific specs on your PC that you were looking oh. for? Uh, I have a ridiculously overpowered machine. Uh, I have a. <laughs> It is a monster of a machine that I will never ever use the full capacity of, but uh, the way that computers are these days, it makes no sense to to not buy a machine that uh, it has a, uh, it's got a, it's got an eight gigabyte video card. Uh, it's an Acer, uh, yeah. it's got 32 gigabytes of RAM, uh, it's Windows 10. Um, yeah, it, it, it's just, you know, a, a proper graphics processor is really going to help. 
uh, especially if you go into into video editing. But I, I don't do a whole lot of that, but uh, it's nice to have a machine that can handle it. And then my machine costs thirteen hundred dollars, so yeah. it's it's not that expensive. Yeah. Okay. Very good. That's always always a very important thing to to discuss because some people think they need a really really um, like big PC. So to no, you really don't. Work, no. but... <laughs> That's good. Like for your style, you're saying that you don't use your computer to the fullest capacity. Oh no. No, I just I just bought this ridiculously overpowered piece because uh, the the ones that were half as good were only two hundred dollars less. So, uh, yeah. but for for all other machines that I've that I've had, uh, they just uh, just make sure that you have enough RAM. RAM is going to be really important. Uh, a nice video card helps, but my old uh, my old laptop uh, has eight gigabytes of RAM, hmm. and uh, so. And I would recommend that you get more than that. But <laughs> I, I still did all the work that I did. I still did, you know, uh, I was working for whomever clients um, I was working for at the time, and they, uh, yeah, the work just got done. So yeah, don't yeah, don't don't get hung up on that. <laughs> okay, very good. Um, so you talked a little bit about the brush that you use, the the taper pen and the G pen. Mm -hmm. um, do you customize your settings at all? Uh, I customize my layout a little, but mm. honestly, uh, I, my my brushes, like I have these uh, a couple of extra brushes here. I have a whole bunch more uh, mm. that I that I bought and I never I haven't even installed or looked at mostly because uh, I'm perfectly happy with uh, with the basics here. Um, I worked in the G Pen for uh, forever until uh, I wanted to have a little bit more of a traditional look to my inking, mm. and that's when I uh, that's when I switched to the Taper Pen, which is uh, stock built in. Uh, I haven't touched any of the settings, mm. which are uh, which are Legion. Um, I just I just toggle brush size. That's it. Pretty okay. pretty straightforward. Very good. Um... Speaking of customizing settings, uh, there were some questions regarding your uh, shortcut settings because you switch to the bucket tool without leaving the screen. You zoom yep. in and out without leaving the screen. Can you tell us a bit yep. about that? Absolutely. Uh, like I said, oh, one of the most uh, one of the one of the more amazing things about Clip Studio Paint is that it lets you absolutely set your custom uh, your keyboard set uh, keyboard uh, settings um to whatever you want so you go under file shortcut settings or control shift alt k i don't know what that would be on a on a mac and then it gives you specific options like you can go in the main menu so say for example you want a shortcut key for saving you can set that i have it to control s but if you want to set it to six uh you can do that um so i'll show you my tool settings so here I have the pen, which is what I use mostly. And so I have my tapered pen set to six and I have my G pen set to three. Um, and I have my, uh, my lasso is set to F. Let's see, a selection tool. So here, yeah. Um, and so for example, you can go into the, it is the main menu. So, for example, I'm zooming in and out. Uh, let's see, it's under view. So I have my zoom set to two, zoom in set to two, and my zoom out set to one. So all my shortcut keys are on the left side, mostly because I'm drawing with my right hand. So like I said, if you're left-handed, you can customize it that all of your shortcut keys are on the right side of the, the, the keyboard, which is... Uh, from an access accessibility point of view is uh is is wonderful i was wondering because you have the number set so i was wondering if you were using a number pad for that but nope. i guess it's nope on the left side you then. can if you want to absolutely yeah uh, i mean uh, other programs that i've used they make you they, they make you conform to it's like control this or alt tab this and uh 
uh, unwanted. I have my all my panels disappear with tab in and out, and uh, my brush set, my brush sizes increase and decrease with uh, the bracket keys. I think that's a standard uh, a standard set. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um... Just to go go back a little bit, you touched on it at the beginning. Uh, do you have any specific tips for pressure sensitivity and making the most of of what the pen can do? Uh, I um, the the settings as they are. I mean, I'm using a Cintiq, but if you're using a tablet, uh, it's going to be it's going to be the same thing. Um, the I haven't done any, I haven't changed any of my settings um, mm. the way that the way that I bought them, uh, the way that I bought the program or the or the tablet. Uh, it is all uh, the computer and the software manage it all. Um, so there's there's really nothing to change. The only variable controlling it is you. So learning uh, learning to to control your hand and to you know know when to push and when to when not to push and keeping an eye on your line weights like remembering that the light source affects the thicker line and the like that so if it be here mm -hmm. things like that you know uh like remember that things have a physical weight like the chin Mm. has more physical weight than the top of his head and the ear <laughs> just like that you know, and you know like i said you know, none of these none of these rules are set in stone i mean obviously thick to thin is set in stone but how you want to control your contrast um or your 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 uh, your other lines like uh as another fantastic comic artist called jeff smith he made a comic named Bone, um, and he, the way he works with black and white is uh, is gorgeous. And he uses uh, he uses black and white in a way that doesn't always make sense, but it reads perfectly. And it's and as long as it works, uh, it works. You know, so so uh, I don't worry about it. Okay. Speaking of other artists, um, do you have anyone you would like to name as a big influence for yourself? Uh, yes, uh, I would say uh, Kim Jong Gi is a huge influence uh, on on my uh, on my direct inking practice. Um, I grew up. Uh, I also grew up with a lot of Robert Crumb at a younger age. He got me into into cross hatching, uh, you know, which is just like this, and it's it's a way to add texture and contrast to whatever it is you're doing. Um, there are brushes that will cross hatch for you. I, I don't particularly uh, care for those. Um, uh, another huge, huge influence on my work. I'd say that's probably one of the larger influences on my work is Anthony Holden. He's a mm -hmm. fantastic, uh, fantastic artist and a, and a great human. And the way that uh, he achieves is, is gorgeous line weights and his he, where he mixes cute with 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 badass and uh machinery and cute characters it's yeah it's it's just it's a massive uh, massive influence mm, okay um do you usually draw on one layer or do you have a specific setup if you have like one of your pieces with a lot of small details Let's see. Uh, it kind of depends. Uh, let me see um, if I have a piece here. No, I don't. Um, it really depends. Uh, generally, I'll have at least two layers. Like, see, here I have the underlayer. Oh, I forgot her. Uh, I'll have the underlayer. Um, and then above that, and for example, uh, if, if one part needs to be separated from the others, or um, I'll just use layers as as necessary. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, I mean, there's not a whole lot of uh, 
it's nice to have layers so that they're not destructive and you can just cut them out. So for example, you want to have this part, but it's it's now tied to to the little jacket. You control X, control V, and then you know you can just uh, adjust the proportions that way. Um, this little uh, you guys should also be commended for this little dock that can also be completely customized. It's got a whole bunch of functions, um, like crop and delete. So you don't, and this is especially good for mobile users, but that that's a, a completely different thing. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> um, you had some, in some of your pieces, you have a little bit of color in your, your artwork. Um, is this something you decide beforehand or do you just think hmm, some, some color in this would be nice? Um, I, you know, I'm naturally not the greatest at, at color. I just don't have a very good color sense as much as I'd like. I'm trying to improve that. Um, but it's, it's so nice to, to add some kind of a, some kind of a pop. So, um, a lot of times I will just add, uh, a nice gray nice gray underneath so I'll do that on another layer I'll do that under my inking layer mm. and I'll go here and uh, this thing is is also a, a big uh, lifesaver so I can just go desaturate the color take a bigger brush oops on the layer underneath that way and then uh, and the red, the red, it just kind of started out as a nice way to to make things stand out, and to to really kind of you know add some nice contrast. Because right now there's there's a lot there's a lot uh, there's a lot going on, but there's some nice black areas that stand out. Um, yeah, but generally generally I stay in a black and white color space. Yeah. Okay, um, one more question, and then I think I think we're through um, because it's getting the time is coming to an end here. Yep. Um, yep. So you have these very very detailed ink drawings with lots and lots and lots of detail. Mm -hmm. um, with how much purpose do you go into a piece like that, or do you keep just adding what you what you feel fits in that moment? uh let's see for it, it really kind of depends um for this particular piece for example i just started out of nowhere um i find and this kind of comes down to uh, some of the things that i talked about earlier um it's just uh it it's it's all about uh what what sort of flow state you you want to get into um like I don't, uh, none of this was really preconceived. I just knew that I wanted to fill a whole page with all of my characters, and uh, and oftentimes, you know, they'll they'll incur they'll uh, what's the word inspire. Um, oftentimes they'll inspire something else to draw. So. Uh, that's the best way to put it um so say for example uh the the sushi piece over here uh, I, I started with a basic idea of a restaurant and then uh once uh, you know, I, I started slowly filling them in and then the ideas kind of come to me as as the space starts filling in um, and this way, this way, I can keep an eye on the general composition and add, you know, some quiet areas like these lamps here to, to differentiate the fore and the background, um, and to, to just, um, yeah, really kind of let my brain play. Uh, and that's that's yeah, that's that's uh, that's generally generally how I work. Um, mm -hmm. When I get a lot of commissions, um, or I, I do get a lot of commissions that just give me a basic theme, and they just want me to uh, go crazy with it. Mm -hmm. 
uh, like here or here. Here, the, the basic theme was uh, the commissioner wanted, had the character of a mechanical uh, giraffe that they really liked and they wanted him in the library of things. So uh, I inked it digitally and I printed it out and lowered the opacity and uh, uh, yeah, and then I inked it traditionally. Mm. Okay, how long does a piece like that take you? This piece, I mean, the the layout uh, honestly takes the longest, like finding room for everything. Mm. Um, let's see, uh, let's see, you have another piece. So this one didn't take that long. Let's say, like the proper inking can be done, like the final inking can be done. Let's see where to go. Uh, in like six hours for, you know, the, the ink, inking, this probably took me four to six hours. Hmm. Um, and the layout uh, can, it can come quickly. But uh, I would say most pieces like this would take me about one to two days of solid work. Um, but so you see this, for example, this has taken me like 45 minutes yeah. while I was, while I was talking about something else. I do a lot of, uh, a lot of streaming on Twitch and Instagram and wherever else. And, uh, those streams usually last about hour, hour and a half. Um, uh yeah <laughs> okay um all right then i think that's all for questions that we have time for and thank you so much for presenting your your workflow and your inking techniques for us no it has been uh, it's been my absolute honor and pleasure to uh to be given this opportunity to speak um, if you have any uh, any other questions, always feel free to DM me on Instagram or uh, email me through my website. Uh, yeah, I'm always open to uh, to inking questions or uh, you know whatever whatever it may be. I like <laughs> Thank you back. so much. Thank you so yeah. much, uh, Jeremy. Uh, we loved you watching you draw and we we really enjoy your drawing and inspire a lot and also we really appreciate all of your tips and experience because we have seen social media that has been exploding with the people that are really enjoying today's webinar so great thanks again for your time and for sharing your knowledge with us thank you so much joanna uh, for handling all of the questions that came in to the question panel today. Thank you all the attendees that are still with us. And before we go, let me just share some information with you. Uh, so for more information about Clip Studio Paint, please visit clipstudio.net forward slash n and graphicsly.com. Just as a reminder, this webinar is being recorded and will be posted tomorrow on our YouTube channel, Graphicsly, and it will also be on Celsius web. For more information about Jeremy, uh, please visit his uh, Twitch channel, hey Inkshift, uh, his Instagram, Inkshift, Facebook, he has a group uh, called Inkshift, and as he mentioned, his website, Inkshift.com. So with that, thank you so much, Jeremy. Oh, thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much, Joanna. You're very welcome. Uh, Thank you, too. Please stay tuned uh, for more webinars, promotions, information, and giveaways. Thank you so much for all of you, and we'll see you on our next time. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>